All right, so a little while back I showed you in a video how you can use Ableton's chain selector feature to switch through presets in your project by launching different clips. And if you want to know all the details about that, you can check out that video. But basically the idea was you take an instrument rack, I'll make this super quick because I want to show you what the problem is with this method. So what you would do then is you would, uh, you know, take some of these sounds, let's use some brass here and a pad as well. And just to show you that this works with you know not just Ableton's internal sounds we can go ahead and use uh, Vital as well which is a third-party synthesizer so now you have all of your three presets let's keep it simple let's just keep it at three presets you have them all in your rack you would go to the chain pane here and then you would assign a different chain value to each of these presets and up here you have the chain selector and whatever preset that chain selector is selecting is going to be the active preset and so of course you can automate that and so you can create a clip here and go to chain selector which is already selected how convenient set the value to zero and then maybe on the second clip you could set the value to one and then on the third clip you could set the value to two and i'm just going to deactivate the quantization here so i can freely launch my clips without them being quantized look at what happens so if i launch the first clip here it's going to select the first preset which is our brass sound i'll launch the second clip we have our pad and on the third preset we have Vital. And this is all well and good. It's a very easy way to set up your presets. But the problem is that that ease comes at the expense of increased CPU usage. And that is because all of your presets have to be preloaded. And then you just can select which one you're using at any given moment. But they are all there texting your CPU. And you won't notice this when you have a very simple setup like this one with uh, just three presets. But if you you know, increase the number of presets and the complexity of them as well. Because right now I only have some uh, individual devices, but you could add some audio effects and you could even create racks as presets inside of your instrument rack, which combine different sounds. So this can get very complex and very CPU heavy. I was just working on a rather long project the other day, a full live show, almost uh, one and a half hours with several different presets. And I noticed that my laptop was starting, you know, those those crackles and pops that you hear when your buffer is set a little bit too low and your computer your cpu just isn't able to deal with everything you're throwing at it anymore and so you would have to increase that buffer which comes at the price of some extra latency so you don't want to do that of course right so i've been thinking there's got to be a way to solve this issue so i have two solutions for you today one of which i think addresses the cpu problem very effectively but isn't as elegant and quick to implement and then the second and final solution is going to be the best of both worlds but let's not get ahead of ourselves here let me just remove these clips first and then we'll set everything here back to zero we're going to ignore the chain feature bring the selector back to zero as well and what we're going to do now is we're going to automate our effects so that they turn on and off depending on when we want to use them so again let's create our clip here and i want to automate it being turned on and off so let's go to the automation pane here here and let's set the silk horns to on for the first clip right this pad we want to be turned off so let's write in that automation and then visal we want to be off as well so let's automate that as well good let's duplicate this clip and this time around we're going to make it so that uh, visal is still off but the first device we want to be off as well the pad we want to be on this time around duplicate that and now let's turn off our pad and now it's vitals moment to shine so let's turn it on so let's have a look at what happens when we launch our clips launch the first clip it will turn on the first effect and turn off the other two launch my second clip visal is still off now the first device here is turned off and the pad is turned on and on the third clip of course my first two devices are bypassed and visal is active so this addresses the CPU problem very effectively because whenever you bypass a device, it's not going to tax your CPU no more. So you're only ever activating the device you're actually using. The problem with this approach is that it can get a little convoluted maybe because, you know, it, it was easy enough with just three devices. But suppose we had like a reverb after vital. Sorry, let me put it in the correct position. So now we would have to automate the reverb as well. And then imagine having 
multiple presets, you know, in Ableton Live Lite, you can have up to 16 scenes, right? So imagine having to automate 16 devices for every single clip. I know you just have to do it once and then you're good to go, but then whenever you want to create a new project with different presets, you're going to have to do it all over again. So it's kind of a tedious process. And so I thought there's got to be something that is like the best of both worlds, right? Easy and quick to set up, but also addresses the CPU problem. If there is a way to do this. Basically, the idea is that we have an empty rack on our track and whatever presets we want to use, we save as rack presets. So have a look at my user library here. If I go to presets, instruments, instrument rack, I have saved a couple of presets here already using Ableton's devices and Vital, but instead of saving them as presets, like instead of saving it as a Vital preset, I set Vital the way I wanted it. I wrapped it inside of a rack and I saved that rack as a preset. It's like an extra layer, right? So I can just show you some of these as an example. Here I have my 80s brass rack. And as you can see, it's just vital wrapped into a rack. And we can automate using our clips, which rack presets we launch. And the beauty of this is that you can put everything you want inside of an instrument rack. You can have one of Ableton's sound generating devices. You can have third party synths. And then you can use Ableton's effects or some third party effects, everything in the same rack and save your chain as a preset and load it up using clips. There's just one little extra step you need for that. You're going to need to download a custom control surface script. And the good news is that number one, it's nothing you need to install. It's just a bunch of text files that need to be placed into a certain folder. So, you know, not very intrusive. And number two, it's completely free. And so let me show it to you. So it's called CliffX and here's the address where you can get it at. I'm going to put the link in the description box, obviously. So you would go to code, download zip. And once you extract the zip, there is a folder called CliffX. And now I'm going to show you where you have to put that folder. And this is going to vary depending on whether you're on Windows or on Mac, but I think it should be pretty easy to find out. So on Mac, you want to go to your applications folder, show lives, package contents, contents, app resources, MIDI remote scripts. And if I type in C, as you can see, here I have my CliffX folder. And inside of it, as you can see, it's just a bunch of text files. So there you go. On Windows, I think it's probably the program files folder, but you know what? You could just open File Explorer and type in MIDI remote scripts and it will probably find the folder, which you can then open and copy CliffX into. Easy enough. And then what you want to do is you want to go into Ableton, open up your preferences, go to MIDI. And as you can see, I have selected CliffX here as one of my control surfaces. And you might wonder, well, why didn't you choose the first slot? Really, the only difference between these slots is the color. And as you can see here, CliffX has this nice shocking pink fuchsia kind of color, which I dig because it's very easy to spot it, right? And that's why I selected the fifth slot. If I had like set this to none and use the first slot instead, as you can see, now we have this red outline, which is not ideal because I tend to use red for my tracks. So, you know, just a little note on the side, you can experiment, see what other colors you can get. I personally happen to enjoy number five. Now, there is a specific kind of uh, syntax you gotta use in your clips for them to actually activate CliffX actions. So what you want to do is you want to rename your clips, right? So let me delete these. Let's work with the first one. I'm going to rename it and you got to input these two square brackets. That is going to identify the clip as a CliffX clip and then you can put in the action you wanted to perform. Now you're also free to put in between those brackets whatever you want. So what I like to do is I just like to put in the scene number because, you know, it's easy enough to understand that this is my first clip, but if I were to put a clip here, would you like immediately be able to tell which number it is without looking to the scene number on the right? Probably not. So I like to keep things nice, clean, and tidy and just put in a number there. And then the command is just swap. And then you can use one of three options, either the backward pointing arrow, or the forward pointing arrow, or you can even just type in the exact name of the preset you want to load up. So let's start with the arrows. Let's just put an empty instrument rack here, right? So now if I launch this clip, I am basically telling Ableton to load up the previous preset to the one currently selected for the type of device that is on the track. In this case, we have an instrument rack, so no preset is loaded at the moment. So if I load up the previous preset, it's probably gonna be the last preset in my list. So let's see and look at that. 
Now we have a synth strings preset, which is my last preset down here. Press this again. Now we have the monster preset, which is the one before it. And as you can see, it renames the track as well, which is very beautiful because this way you know what preset you currently have selected. And of course it works both ways. I can use the forward pointing arrow and now you guessed it, we're scrolling downward. So now we have synth strings selected again. This is very cool. You could indeed just double this clip here and you know use the backward arrow on your first slot and then let's rename this to two. You could have the forward arrow on your second slot and just scroll presets like that. You could assign launching these two clips to two buttons on your MIDI controller and you could use them to you know move forward and backward between your presets which is pretty cool. The only problem I see with this approach is you don't necessarily know what preset you're actually going to select. Like once you selected it it will change the name of the track right and you will see it on the device down here as well if you expand it so you know what you're playing but you don't know whenever you launch one of these clips what comes before it what comes next and so so that is why I think the best solution for this is to just type in the name of the preset. Like if I type in 80s brass, let me expand this so it's a little easier to see. And I launch this, as you can see, it selected the 80s brass preset directly. And then I could have my clip number two set up in such a way that it launches my belly preset. So I launch the clip and as you can see, we have the belly preset selected. So this way you can populate your clip list here with up to 16 different presets if you're unable to light light. If you have one of the full versions, you can have as many presets as you want and then you can just recall them immediately and you know which preset you're actually gonna be playing, you know the name of it. And so hopefully you know what it sounds like as well. So this is the best of both worlds. And the reason for that is that as you can see, we are only ever loading up a preset from scratch. So we don't have to preload a bunch of different chains, which is going to cause heavy pressure on our CPU. But at the same time, it's extremely easy to set up. We don't need to be automating 16 different parameters for every clip, right? We just need to name the clip the correct way. This is basically it. As you can see, it's a, it's a pretty easy thing to set up and use. And I think it's a very elegant solution. So if you think so too, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know as well. I'm always happy to help. And yeah, Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video next week. Take care.